it on my phone now and the kids are helping. Everybody else is left. Um, so I created a jig and put a hole saw without the mandrill on the jig. I bored through both sides. It's ready to come off now. I need to straighten up my conductor so it doesn't fight me the whole way. And we'll pull this off and see if I damage the conductors. If I did, I'm I'm in Woo! And I'm really in trouble. This video is brought to you by SPAN. If you don't want 14 linear feet of electrical equipment on the outside of your home, click the link below for more information, but stick around to the end because I'm going to break down for you how SPAN's elegant solution could have made this very different. Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. At Electric Pro Academy, we stress real skills to make real money. Best way to develop real skills is to encounter real problems. Hopefully we have real solutions. I don't know yet because it's not over. We're 12 hours in and this is what I have to show for myself. I'm going to be working through the night. The line crew shows up tomorrow morning at 8.30. As long as I'm done by then, I don't care. I'm going to be on a work high tomorrow. I can almost guarantee it. Now let's jump into it. Uh, as soon as they cut it, we're going to start disassembling the equipment. And now I know we're going to run into something real funky because that old weather head pops into the brick and disappears. I have no idea where it goes from there. I have no idea where the... Yep. I have no idea where the conduit that goes into the house is. No idea where it's fed from. So there's an underground conduit coming in right about by that downspout. And that's a two inch for the main panel for the house. Okay. Well, that'd be perfect. And... No idea. So we're definitely making material runs. We're definitely running into issues. We're definitely facing challenges. What's your hard stop today? Uh, Nothing specific? Uh -huh. All right. Obviously, I'm here until the deed is done. Um, the tenant's already out of the carriage house, so he's been informed. Power's not on until late tonight. So what I think is happening is when we de-energize stuff, I think this is the panel that's in the pool mechanical room. I think, Which is or, or it could be reversed underneath the pool, yeah. And then this uh, is some carriage house, but then maybe one of the panels, the panel on the far side of the house. Yeah, no expansion couplings, all busted up. Look at that. Torn the heck up. Yeah, I don't know if that's worth in my house or not. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't put expansion couplings on long runs of PVC. It just rips itself to shreds. I mean, you have to have an expansion going after, like, rain right? Box. Yeah, that's an indoor box. That's an issue. These are compression couplings, but not rain tight compression. Um, this is not supported other than being taped to the line set. And a breaker may be acceptable. I'd have to check the code based upon the compressor size. So. They're flirting pretty pretty bad, pretty bad. Flirting pretty bad. Yeah, oh yeah, no AC for the tenants. Look at that bad boy. Sub panel under pool. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, let's verify that. This cover's not gonna stay open by itself. Watch your head. Uh, I'll get you on the phone and tell you when I'm ready for you to turn that off. What, what did you turn on? Uh, I think that's a water heater inside. Okay. Or you're actually going to turn off that disconnect. And I'm suspicious that that's underground to the west wing of the house here. But give me just, and that would be the, I'm assuming it's a 200, maybe 100 amp disconnect. That's where it comes in over there. So it comes up above grade, right before it enters the house. All right, I'm ready, you can hit it. Yeah, try the main. Okay, you can leave it off, but that's not this. Try the disconnect right next to the meter. That is it. It's a 125 and it's upside down. Beautiful, beautiful. That one is not upside down, but there is another one upside down. 
Okay. Um, can you label that one West Wing? Hey, Joel. Yes, sir. Um, how many meter bases are you going to have? Total of three. Okay. Or is this for this job? Yes. Okay. The light company, they wire those. Correct. Okay. So is somebody, you have, do you have that coordinated or? You, you, what they'll do is they'll hook them up and then they'll prorate the power for a couple of days until they get the metering guy out okay, here. Is that what you were told? Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because we, you know, we, we weren't aware of any of that, you know. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay. The, oh, is the 200, the 200 is just going to be a regular meter. Correct. And the other two are 400s that need this piece. Bingo. Um, let's hit the other one. I can see the house light from here. And that's the house. We're now offline, which is fine. So this is upside down. Ready? Set. Oh, not yet. Ready? Set. There it is. Ah, oh, moves with like butter. So that's plenty. Just get it out of our way. Next. All right, pulled the cables back out of our way. So underground, there are three four-inch Schedule 40 conduits with sweep 90s as prescribed by the utility company 16 months ago when we started this in process. Excavated right here, pulled out a chunk of sidewalk, set it aside. That's mini X and two apprentices for a day. Sliced right through here, buried the conduits. We put in a one-inch PVC provisional conduit for data and communications. If we want to take that underground and keep the overhead clear, always bury that one inch PVC conduit for communications. It's almost impossible to coordinate a one day open trench with a data company to have them drop their cable in that trench. Almost impossible. You'd be on hold, you'd be pulling your hair out. Craziness. So we bury the conduit and then they can come at their leisure and pull right through that sucker and boom, done. So 16 months in the making, today's the day. I know we're gonna have problems. Check it out. We've got code violations galore. We're not going to clean it all up in one day. My goal today is to have power back on by tonight so the fridges don't go bad, my tenant doesn't walk out on me. Uh, that's it. Power back on tonight. You know, there's going to be some there's going to be some more work down the road. I'm not addressing the air conditioning disconnect issue. I'm not I'm not addressing that uh, nasty old NEMA 3R panel over there. We just got to get this squared away thousand amps one day start to finish today's the day it's beautiful 82 degrees right now it's like 67 i mean it's gorgeous it might as well be san diego but we're in indiana so all right we've got a subcontractor for utility company two linemen out here they're building three risers on the pole it's gonna be fun to see those those old boys at work they've got three times as much experience as i do i love these guys so building the risers on the pole conduits and wire laid out we are about to, we've turned off power to the whole house, we're about to disconnect it, rip everything off the wall, and see what we find. But, you know, first thing is to capture all the labels that we can, so everything makes as much sense as possible, so that when we're putting it back together, we have a lucid plan. I'm not nervous, I'm excited. 16 months into making, 1,000 amps. This is like, this is what I do, right? This is what I want, like, I don't buy, ties or bow ties. I don't do fancy food. I, I don't drink wine. I wanted a thousand amps. That's what I wanted. <laughs> and I don't work for Tesla. So when the conduits are installed pre-wire, they're all taped off. And then the linemen come through, run the wire through, and so now we've got all this tape that's sticking like there's no tomorrow to peel off here so that our couplings will slide on. Just a little bit tedious. About to give one of the kids a knife and let him go at it. Uh, Somebody get this trash box. Ah, there he is. Wow. <laughs> How long has he been there watching this? He could have all of our trade secrets by now. Two hours, oh no. House goes through and West Wing goes down. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Expound? I'm not sure how that conduit gets to where it needs to go. No, no idea. And the wire's only three inches long. 
That's right. No, I hope we don't end up having to tear out brick today. That'd be wild. We're gonna have to remove these conduits that are going, or at least reroute them. Or yeah. Let's uh, let's take them all apart at the most convenient joint right here. Like just loosen this. If this joint is free, we can pop it. These are all screws. None of them are powder actuated anchors. So let's take it apart at the most convenient location. Just set the piece of conduit aside, lay the wire out, and then we'll bring it back in when we're ready. Clip, what I was doing on the layout here is uh, getting our meter cabinet figured out. Trying to get it as far away as we can. Yeah, I don't know if that's far enough. Break are off. Yep, I believe all breakers are off. These are off. Are all these off? Yeah, the main's off. Main's off. Yep, we're dead. How long have you been doing this, Cisco? Uh. I've been at it 40 years. He's been at it almost 40, I don't know, 50. He's been at it 50. Uh, 50 years? Yeah, we, we both retired from the light company. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Why do they call you Cisco? Because uh, he's Poncho. <laughs> Poncho and Cisco. Nice. Yeah. You need a roll of tape, you got one? He's got one. Okay. Uh, we, I was about three years ago. He did about five years ago. Nice. So take your pension, but then Move on over and keep bringing in the bacon. Keep working, yeah. That's good. Yeah. We don't have enough of you guys, so that's uh, good for us. It's a good trade. You know what? Um, during the pandemic, we had some solar customers, because we do a lot of solar energy, and that works for you, various utility companies. Yeah. And they, uh, I mean, multiple of them came out of the woodwork and spent 50 to 100 grand on solar and battery systems for their homes. And they said, you know, Joel, you know it's the most fragile component of the grid? It's the labor to maintain the grid. We don't have enough of it as it is. And if these guys retire, they get sick with COVID, your, your power is going to come back on. But it might be two to three weeks. It might not be two to three hours like you're used to. Well, the whole demographic shifts it too. We lost a lot of guys that had experience with retirement. Right. It takes a long time to... Five years on your apprenticeship. Five years on the apprenticeship. Thanks. Yep. So this is the overall layout that we're gonna have. 400 amp cabinet, 200 amp cabinet, 400 amp cabinet. If you're from Europe and you're watching this, you're like, why are these 400 amp cabinets so dang big? It's because we're in the Western hemisphere. Everything's bigger in the West. <laughs> I don't know, they're very large. Uh, it seems like overkill, but uh, the, the deal is to have all your conduit entries planned out, to have all your spacings accurate and this is a layout that's been approved by metering and engineering at the power company. That's what it's all about. Right now, it's not about the National Electrical Code. It's about the utility meter manual because that's the AHH. That's the authority that governs this, right? Service equipment. So that's the standard. AES Gold Book. It's messy. Wear your gloves before you handle that, that big guy. So what do you say? 42. 42 is the height. Top is six foot max. That's going to be too tall. Six foot is here. Forty two is there. Should have to bring that down substantially. Should cut it down there. We're going to cut some of these straps off so that we can pull the conduit back while we install new cabinets over here. Once we get the cabinets installed, we'll reinstall some of this conduit and route it back into the new panels. I tried to just cut the bolt off, but it's too rusted on, so we'll have to replace the entire strap. Let's see what kind of play we have now. Ooh, nope. Okay, so it's pretty far off. This one, we've got the luxury of having the 90s on it. 
But that one's the right one. So let's pull it off the wall further. That's going to be uh, one and nine sixteenths to the inside. Let's let's redo this mark real quick. That is going to be. That's a quarter. Um, so that's one and nine. One and five sixteenths. Yeah. It's going to be. Let me mark that real quick. Actually, thinking out loud here. All right. Let's slide it down. And that's. We're going to be. Want it as far this way as we can do, which I think is there. Okay, there's our mark. It's time to cut. Hey, so we've got this Racketeers dirt bag. It's the perfect time to use it. It's a smooth faced, four magnets, catches all your metal filings. Beautiful. The problem is it's so big, you often can't use it unless you have like a commercial sized cabinet. And if there's a bunch of wire entry, like you're trying to prevent filings from coming in the top of a cabinet, but you've got a bunch of wire and cable entry, there's no space to insert this thing. You've got a clean, you have to have a clean, smooth surface that's about a five by five square. Holes nice and clean. Uh, you've been asking, so we brought the good old Greenlee boy out here. Woo! This thing's honker. The kit, the whole kit, half inch through four inch knockout. We'll pull your arm off. So the, the, the secret is now getting it all lined up. All right, is the inside spindle screwed on all the way? Make sure that guy is on there. What up? I'm dude. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Push it into me. So our goal is to get it not as far outside it and still be able to get that lock nut on as possible. Let's do it right there. Okay. Here it is. So modifying cabinets, right? This thing will hold itself on there. Starting to plunge through, there it is. Can we modify the cabinet? Well, in this case, yes, because the AHJ has approved us to have a condo to entry at that location. Uh, yep, it's gonna fall out once it's Oh. Almost there. You can get these things jammed if you use them wrong. Thankfully, we didn't do that today. All right, release the pressure. It backs off, and now you spin it off by hand, remove the slug. There it is. Drill the pilot, punch the rest. All right, let's start taking this booger apart. Taking notes as we go. Everything in here is real weathered, right? There's, I'm not reusing any of this stuff for, I mean, never reused for customer projects, but definitely not, even just for little hobby projects, this stuff is worn out. Oh, look how loose that is, shoot. I didn't even have to turn that <laughs> copper to get it out of there. That's why you upgrade equipment, because eventually it fails. When you see a breaker like that, with all this corrosion, signs of water, you can bet that the internal mechanisms are just as busted up. Look at that, it's, cr it's crunchy. You can feel it. It grits and grinds when it moves. Ugh. I'm not going to trust the existing grounding system. We'll put in our own. Let's see. Let's see what's going on there later. All right, let's pull this off the wall. Look behind it. If you're not wearing safety gloves, you're gonna get your hands all torn up. The ends of these copper conductors are all sharp. Seriously. It goes. Feel free to cut it. Didn't hurt. Ah! All right, we knew there was something going on in here because I had replaced the electrical panel on the inside for the carriage house and uh, it didn't match up with what was on the outside. Nice modified fitting, beautiful. 
And uh, so this is the old meter cabinet and they wanted it to be real clean on the brake, I'm assuming. So they embedded it in the brake so the cover was just a perfect fit. And that's why that weather head disappears inside. So we'll get all that cleaned up off the outside of the house, but that's not today's priority. I'm gonna dig around in here a little bit and see what I find. There's an accessory conduit. It's hard to see anything past all the spider webs. Look at that, there's more. Some old knob. No, those are copper feeders. Copper feeders from up above. Okay, that's them. And then we've got these three conductors, two hots and a neutral through the wall. I think that's what was feeding this old panel in here. Definitely improperly sized. This is type TW. It's gonna be 60 degree rated, number eight. Shoot. And then this is what's underground to the house. Oh my, oh my, and it's way too small. Oh my, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was gonna be something like this, but it's time to come up with a plan of attack. All right, we've uncovered some problems here, but at least we've got everything off the wall. We know what we're working with. We're ready to mount our first cabinet right here. Cliff and Tim will tackle that while I uh, figure out what to do with this quirky little jobby. All right, we are securing, we, we have secured the CTs into the cabinet. The white dot is for the utility side, line side. Their uh, CTs are in a two to one ratio, so they say 200, but they're for 400 amp service. So two to one ratio. We're now bolting the mechanical lugs onto the CTs on either side. And uh, that's gonna, you just need the mechanical lugs that are sized to fit the type, size, and quantity of conductors. So that's the selection we've made. These uh, 320 amp cabinets used to be like 150 bucks and now they're up to like, you can, you can buy for two grand if you want. So Rob supplied these from AES. Okay. And they're such a larger footprint that the conduits are too close. So in order to get them spaced out, he approved coming in, you know, instead of all on the left or all on the right. Okay. Because when those come in, they got to come in and sweep around the top. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a straight feed. Right. I mean, we'll put an arch in it, expansion loop or something in the service bar coming in. Right. But I just, and that's of course going to go all the way up and loop around into yeah. the top. That's I just good. wasn't, wasn't sure why they you alternated it on that. And if it's because of the conduit thing, then that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Part of the beauty of this is these conduits have been underground for 16 months. So they'd probably settle all they're gonna settle. If you guys want us to haul off any scrap, we will. I do that. Now we can just take it off, which is the fun part. Everyone's favorite job. Probably this kind of will come off with it. Okay. But. Hopefully. Yep. So we'll lay it down. Yep. That's all right. Both of them came out. What? Did you see blue? You had a full seat dry fit first round when you marked the wall? Uh, I'm seeing that this isn't fully seated. Or actually, uh, this it, this side is. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it, it's it was not probably a quarter inch from being fully down. Yeah, but it was difficult to get it to that. Point. You you want to have that quarter inch somewhere in there. If you think that's the only quarter inch you've got, that's good. Because if you you don't want to move your holes down here or actually up here, because they'll split out the edge of the brick. So keeping them towards center is good. Do um, you have just four mounting holes? I believe so. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. This this um, the structure looks like it's in great shape. I don't see any settling cracks or anything. That are these these are full worry. bricks. They're not. They are full bricks.
Man, these hollow wall anchors are bulletproof. Quarter 20 is like the universal fastener for construction, American construction purposes. So you screw the hollow wall anchor set all the way in with the flare at the opposite ends. Hand tight, you cram it into the wall, use a hammer to drive it. I'll be your assistant, Cliff. Go for it. Drive until it stops. Boom, there it is. If you over hammer, then you start to loosen the masonry. You use a pair of channel locks typically to lefty loosey that thing right out of there. Boom. And that anchor is potentially the best that you will ever get. It's set to a predictable depth. We have one inch long bolts. It's gonna work beautifully, beautifully. Good work, you guys wanna hold it while I set it? Do you have the um, sealants on there yet? No. Is this a trial or is this for real? Pull it off. Pull it off. Yeah. Oh no. Don't know if it's a trial or for real. Um, Tim side. Here it is. Uh, something's not lining up. There it is. Oh, guys, it's dead on, spot on. It's beautiful. There's so much surface area on the quarter twenty anchor. There's so much surface area that's grabbed. That's that's surface area cool. with respect to an anchor correlates to the surface area of the hole. Oh, correlates to reliability. Sturdiness, reduced was. likelihood of blowout. Like, I love Tapcons. They've Probably got their place with the quarter 20 lead anchor on old well. brick like this. When we unsurpassed, it. in my opinion. Because I know it was seated down here. We're going to use a swedge adapter. That's what this is called in the US of A, at least in the Hoosier State. Swedge adapter. And we're going to slip fit this right down in there. It's not going to be glued. And it's gonna protrude down into the pipe pretty far so that if the ground settles anymore, now probably won't here because this pipe's been underground for, it was well installed and it's been in the ground for 16 months. So it's probably done all the settling it's gonna do. It was at the bottom of the trench. Undisturbed earth does not settle. That's why you get houses down below the frost line and to undisturbed earth because undisturbed earth doesn't settle. It's been there for thousands of years, right? And so, uh, as long as the conduits are on the bottom of the trench, there's no loose fill underneath them. They've been in the ground for 16 months. And then we take a, a tertiary precaution and we slip fit this down inside pretty far. That's got a lot of room. If it settles further, it's gonna, it's gonna retract like that. It's gonna move at the slip fit as opposed to pulling one of our glue joints apart. So fantastic using swedge adapters. Um, so four inch conduit to bring it up to your desired height. Swedge adapter, two and a half inch, slipped down pretty far inside. Meter cabinet on the top of that. Strike the bell end. Sorry, UKers, that's what it's called in Hoosier State. And we're good to go. Came this up on top of the ladder, removing the unsightly equipment there. Sawing it off so we don't have to look at it anymore. Once you're got the box opened up, holler at me and I'll wiggle the wires outside and we'll just make sure it's the same set of conductors. I'm both. Yeah, pull them both off. Once J box cover is off, wiggle the wires, holler at me. It's not moving, huh? Pull the white. Oh, okay, there you go. You see the white? There it is, boom. Man, still don't have the first idea what to do with this. Conduit entry is not allowed in the back of these meter cabinets. It's specifically prohibited. So we've got to figure out how to retrieve this set of conductors in a code compliant manner and bring it in the bottom or sides of the cabinet. We've got a cabinet that's gonna sit functionally right here. So we're gonna be able to cover that up, but I, I am gonna run out and get some concrete block, cut to size and set it in there, patch it up so that structurally we have a mason repair, masonry repair at my skill level and budget point. It's gonna be completely concealed behind this, but it's gonna re rebuild the wall. But the thing is, how do I retrieve this set of conductors 
and bring them out of the wall into the bottom of the panel. And I'm afraid, like legit afraid, I'm gonna move that, that I'm going to have to open up a trough, find a fitting, spin that pipe off, that old rusted rigid pipe off with a pipe wrench and a cheater bar and then bend me up some two inch rigid, slip it back in there and have it exit the wall and come in the bottom of my meter cabinet. Oh man, it's just, I, I mean that's a, it's a four or five hour chore right there, you know? Got any better ideas? And then how do you spin on the new piece of pipe that has an offset in it, right? You can't. You'd have to spin it onto an existing fitting wherever you find one. And God forbid that is, you know, it could be they bent this piece when this was all opened up and there's not a, a threaded joint here. So we could use a compression, rigid compression coupling. I mean, is there any way to avoid opening the wall? No, we could. It's just a pass-through. Just a pass-through. The question is, how do we get all that refed? We can do outside taps of unlimited length. So we could just put terminal blocks in here or multi-port Polaris lugs and tap all that and send it. But the cabinet's so big, we really can't put a trailer panel below here. Man, oof. So tight. That's the, the only idea I can think of right now. Uh, I'm looking for the, the primary component I need today is a NEMA 3-yard J-Box. Okay, we'll get it rolling. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mm, bye. Bye. Whew, we might escape by the hair of our chinny chin chin. We might. It's not over till it's over. No, that's for this. Okay. So we'll take the same one and put it back in. Okay. Okay. The same meter. Because we're going to swap the meter out. Um, I mean, oh. which is not going to affect you in any way other than the billing. But I wasn't sure okay. if you were going to have an EV, you know, electric vehicle Got dedicated it. because those are dedicated. They're the same meters, just dedicated servers with a different rate. Right. And I, but you don't have that on any of this. The far left one is the, I, the one that's up. That one's the EVX. Exclusive. Exclusive. Okay. Okay. Well, because that's going to be on the CT. You know, they'll take care of that. Okay. I mean, it's not going to change the wiring of it, only the rate. But I needed to know about that. This, this box, and just keep it tight and put our construction yeah. power right there for cutting this and using the high tool to tug that at cable out. Make sense? I don't, that's fine, but isn't this the EV panel? It's not supposed to have anything else on it. Totally fine. Okay. I'm, ne I'm probably never gonna use it, but I only the get- The EV panel. <laughs> I'm never gonna use it during the daytime and you only get the off peak during the nighttime. So like if I ended up running landscape lights off there that were running all night every night, that'd be cheating the system. Make sense? Gotcha. Yeah. So the door on here and then the door also on this is taller than this box. So just mounting straight to here, the cover would be in front of this door opening. So you would be able to open. So we have the offset nipple already attached inside the panel. Now I'm just putting some tap cons in that have already been pre-drilled into the brick here to give it a little bit more support. This meter cabinet right here is the EV charging cabinet, exclusive to EV charging. This is the trailer panel slash main panel for that meter. And then we have a utility outlet here to plug in accessories during the daytime. 
You know, this house was built in 1938 uh, by a family that owned a millwork company and they owned all the land down through here before there were houses or even streets. I mean, just acres and acres, probably went all the way down to US 40, which is almost a mile as the story goes. And this was his, uh, his hunting ground for his dogs. Like literally he had a, just bred dogs here and had this passion for just chasing some coons, I guess. This is the core from the meter base for the carriage house into the electrical panel for the carriage house, which is opposite the wall right here. Tim is torquing down the CTE connections at the mechanical lugs. I want those connections to be consistent and secure. I've never had one burn up on me, and we are not about to start on my house. Okay, two testers have said it's dead, Tim. Hopefully that means you're not. Just take, it, take a chunk of steel and toss it across the terminals and see what happens. We got this guy on too. And this, covered in electrical tape, so I'm no, invincible. Covered in electrical tape. You are invincible. Okay. All it needed. Oh, look, there's a cable right there, and I just scored the armor on it. But uh, we're not on a stud, which is good. I know that's what you guys were worried about. He's gonna come out on a stud on the inside. Not today, baby. <sighs> How do we want to do this? It's almost a, almost a direct offset. I don't think I'm worried about. I think it's six inches on the. Well, I went outside to outside. Man, I, I think it's 10, I think it's 10, 10 and a quarter. I've got the bandsaw here actually. Okay, 10 and a quarter. Do not perform this task in the state of California or other areas prone to forest fires. We have had a ton of rain here in Indiana. In fact, we had, after we installed a solar array on a 10 degree slope grade, there, uh, we had a, a trench that ran right up that grade and to the house. This is a 28 kilowatt residential ground mount solar array. There was three inches of rain, unprecedented, just a deluge, three inches in 24 hours. And that whole trench washed out top to bottom, 150 foot trench. And it probably was the, probably washed out from the bottom up. And so the uh, homeowner is very gracious and understanding and said, this is an act of God. You do not need to come back and fix this. You guys have been great. We'll hire some laborers. And they put in uh, bentonite, which is an exp expanding uh, clay, if you will. And uh, so when it gets wet, it expands. And so there are bentonite dams now in that trench from top to bottom every you know, 10 to 20 feet to prevent washout. Um, that's a common practice, but one that we do not employ. Uh, well from now on in 10 degree grades, but really interesting situation Hopefully I'm applying enough heat to get this thing to bend this schedule 82 and a half inch conduit takes a lot of heat to soften up a lot of heat I've got a second torch here if need be a PVC heat blanket is just Gorgeous, but we don't have one that goes up to two and a half inch So the torch it is for larger sizes. We've got this little Coleman grill man. That's a cost-effective PVC bender, a Coleman grill that you literally side, slide the, uh, it's a little camp stove grill. Slide the PVC through, it's got a cut out on both ends, pop the lid on and just turn that baby slow. And uh, it heats them up nice. You can, you know, fantastic control on the temperature. Slide it in and out, back and forth, and give it some rotation. Beautiful, man, my hand's getting pretty tired. Give me it. Uh, there it is. Come on. Hey Tim, can you pour some water on this for me? Right here. I'm just gonna kind of shape it. It's a little bit ugly. Yeah, just pour it on there. Once you start pouring. All right, do it. Beautiful. More. 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 Fingers are burning. Go. 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 All right. Up a little higher. Yep. 
There it is. We got it. Okay, that's good. Boom. Whew. Bench shall be so made as to not reduce the interior dimension of the pipe. Hopefully we accomplish that goal. I'm actually even gonna bend it in place there because that's gonna hold the end for us. So let's actually relocate to here. Let me turn that off. And let's put it in here. And let's do this. Grab those channel lock. I can get an action. Uh, don't pour it yet. Am I pouring it down through the conduit? No. Just on the edge. Oh, dude, that's that's gonna be it right there. I'm gonna take all the working time I got. Whew, that is smoking. Okay, I'm ready. Down the you conduit? Pour or it. Uh, I'll down the outside. Fine. Yup. Sweet, bro. Probably it. Uh, it's still a little soggy. Keep going. All right. Folding ruler and length on the four inch conduit is gonna be seventeen and a half. Mm -hmm. Just do the outside here. Good. Cool. But we're not gonna do this with we'll the dry fit. And get a mark on it for that mini. That's a big difference. Uh, okay. Oh, I have to paint this stuff. Clean it up. Look at that. It started to die back left. Um, let's pull this down. Sharpie. And this is going to be. I'm going to put our mini right there. Okay. That popped right out. Look at that. <laughs> I think it's okay. How's oh, that Christy going for me? Okay. Let's do it. I'll take uh, Phillips. Damn it. Number two Phillips, if I could. Uh, just hand. Okay. So we're a little high, which means. Bring it down. Cliff, watch your head. I'm going to pull this level out here to miss the rain hub on top of that. So that's flush. So it's all right here. And it doesn't want to move. I don't want to break that out for sure. Let's get a hammer. Um, Tim, you want to grab our other two bolts? Quarter 20 bolts all queued up with lock washers and washers. There it is. Watch out, Joel. Yep. Man, I totally. It's two in a row. It's two in a row, bro. Okay. Where are those wires laying, Joel? <clears throat> what? The multicolor? Oh, in here. Oh, to here. But we don't do that. Correct. No, it's all a yes. Then we need to drop this bag and this in here. This is theirs, correct? Correct. We were thinking J-Box temporarily land the circuits, and then we got smart and said, ah, second trailer panel. Make sure we have plenty of room for that door to open. Let's, 90 degrees is code, but let's even give it a little further for elbow room. So four inches between them, match the heights, land the second trailer panel here. 
instead and then of all of these will terminate in this trailer panel instead of uh replacing that panel right oh. instead of replacing that panel mm. so many darn options because i know that was an option but mm -hmm. the reason you wanted that panel there and then this would be downstream of that panel um right they'd be off the same meter cabinet and there'd be a 200 amp and then a 100 amp or whatever we make this it's a lot of gear on this wall What's better, what's easier, what's better long-term? It's 3.40 in the afternoon, huh? Feeling pretty good, lots to keep track of. We've kind of made a massive mess here. The guys are energizing meter cabinet number one. We're gonna have trailer panel is live, outlet is live, we can start charging up batteries. We also have got some corded uh, equipment. One, the tugger that we're gonna use to pull this out because it, it ain't moving right now. And then uh, two, corded uh, tool for cutting out the brick here so we can do our our surgical operation that's going to be crazy i don't my my level of confidence on the success of that project right now is a 3.8 out of 10. <laughs> but real. it has to be done but it has to be done or the Today. whole house is offline <laughs> 3 40 in the afternoon you save the best for last i don't it's this guy it's going to be good it's going to be good this one's cored through and it's about never ready use those face to land, but it's never. Nope. They are Cliff and small. Tim, I think this is your next priority. Is this carriage house. I'm getting it. It's cored all the way through. We just need to open up the wall on the inside with an electrical access panel and a sawzall. I'm gonna go ahead and run a pilot Sorry. bit through that. So I'm gonna pilot this right in the center. On the inside, you're gonna take the electrical access panel, you're gonna cut into the wall best best place we're above here so we you should be able to cut it in like right there and then use pvc conduit fittings to enter and feed this 100 amp panel right here that's your mission next mission it's good nothing blue that's what we like 127 all right um oh, my boy. ready to go live there it is there it is there it is. Pull that out of the way here. Battery chargers are live. Right, we got two options in J boxes: the polycarbonate. So this one's with the back is about 250 bucks. It is uh, quite a bit deeper, and I think I want that depth. Now the question is: Are they the same diameter or width? And that answer is yes so I'm gonna cut the same slot either way I see what I run into and then I can make a decision last minute how say drill it from this side I guess there's one there's yet. some larger knockouts up here okay you might be able to put an LB kick it Put a 22 and come in right there. And then just drill this. I wouldn't go beyond two if you could. Two inch. These wires are right up against the stud. Oh, they're right up here? Yeah, they notched this stud here. Uh, oh, I see. Well, that's part of a rewire later. So we're saying you put an LB here because we'll have an access panel. I'll be here, you'll kick it, you'll 45 it through the stud, and you'll enter right there and terminate on this breaker. Because we don't have SER. It's like Ooh, SER would be nice. We don't have it. But if you think it's going to be that much easier, we can run for it. You think it's going to save you 45 minutes round trip? We'd need to drill this hole large enough to put the connector on the wire, and then pull it through with the wire and use the wire to hold it in place and slide the lock nut on. Instead of having the... You can have the lock nut on. Well, if you can get your hand in there, you can probably get the Rolex connector in there. 
How about you start by drilling this hole? See what you find through there. I've got a boroscope if you want a really good look at it, but it's probably longer to set up. And, uh, yeah. So Joel's on the other side of the wall here. He's already drilled this hole from the meter base. I cut this hole, that, which had this nice metal mesh in it. Um, cut this out. I'm going to run an LB and some conduit through the wall here into this panel to refeed this panel from the new meter base. So there's a pipe in this wall that was very loose and it was gonna be in the way of our one and a quarter inch conduit. So I cut it out and found some abandoned wires in it. Um, so now we will remove this conduit if we can. Just like that. And by remove, I mean hide. It's gone. It's gone. Poof. Never been here. Love it. Close. Now there's room for me to drill a hole. I'm thinking we just dig that out down there, get a fitting on it, flex up into the bottom, even though I prefer not to use flex, knowing that most of it's going to be all mortared back in and done. And the question is, how do we do the masonry repair? And we can't put the cabinet up there until the masonry repair is done. And I wonder if I, uh, I mean, so we got to pull the wire out and then we cut this off and then that comes out. It's just not good. It's just not good. Um, I, I think we have probably have the parts, but it's a favor from you. On your way home tonight, if you are going home from the shop, would you mind leaving a little bit early so you have time to drop off um, a total of one, two, three, four parts at my house before going to your house without making yourself late? Would that be possible? I think, yeah. Yeah, as long as, like, as, long as it's okay if I leave a little bit early. Early, I think, yeah, I can, I can do, do, do that. As long as the parts are small enough, I, I can fit them in my car. Yeah, Very, I, think I, can, I, can, I can do that. Very small. Uh, it's super important. So I'll text a list on warehouse. I'll tag you. And then once it's picked, if you want to take a picture of them laid out all with each other and then tag me back, would that work? Yeah, that, that, sh that, um, that, um, that, um, that should work. Okay, thanks, Drew. All right, I'll okay. post here within two or three minutes. All right. All right. Thanks. Bye. Man, just working our tail off out here. This is nuts, man. This thing is embedded in just pure concrete, so we've almost got it extricated. Um, I think what's going to have to happen, and I hope one of you has a better idea that I can learn from here, but man, I'm going to bust this concrete up, finish extricating this pipe, pull the conductors back towards the house, cut this off, put a compression or threadless rigid coupling on here, connector, threaded coupling, liquid tight, me me metal liquid tight into the bottom, of the, flex out into the bottom of the cabinet as prescribed by the gold book, can't come in the back, and then do a, a mortar repair here and, and the pipe will be in front of it and the other pipe will be coming out of it and it, that's it. That's it. I'm just hoping. That's all I'm just hoping. What clip? Is that too much wire your way? No, you're good. Okay, I'm done in here then. Thank you. I'm not done in here, but done messing with his wire length out. This is wire from the meter base into this carriage house main panel that I'll be landing here shortly. All right, we've got a number one aluminum. Of course, we're wire brushing it in using antioxidation, torquing this baby down per the specifications right there, which is 250 inch pounds. We're gonna do the tighten, loosen, tighten method. Oh, Drew's calling me, I bet. He's trying to answer the last minute question. What's up, Drew? Hey, Joel. Um, hey, um, so, so, so I'm getting ready to take off, um, but, but, I, um, but I just wanted to make sure, um, does the material in the picture like look, look right before the, like, the, um, for um, 
before I lock up the warehouse and take off. Thank you, Drew. I hadn't seen the picture yet. Um, boom, boom. Is that metallic liquid tight? It is, yeah. There's metal on the inside of it. You got it, bro. Oh, this is gorgeous. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, sweet. I'm, I'm going to lock up the warehouse and then I'll check your way. Okay. I love it. All right. See you. Mm. See, um, see, see ya. Bye. Bye. Oh, praise God for Drew. Dude's killing it. Mm. Woo, come on, hold still. Pop it around on me. <laughs> ah. Allow those individual strands of that one gauge aluminum stranded uh, conductor to Tighten up and see. There it is. Man, these linemen have been so helpful today. They're just, they're just the bee's knees, just the coolest guys. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if we can get that coupling on. Yeah, no problem. All right, we'll repeat that. I think we might be ready to energize this. Okay. Let me check with Cliff inside and confirm that. Okay. Um, why I'm up there? Do you want to try and pull the cable or not mess with it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. No, I'm okay with that. It's for me to Thank you. Conductor's ener uh, landed. Yep. You look ready. They're going to energize this one. Uh, breaker off. Yep. Cool. Breaker's off, conductors are landed, he's clear. We're ready to energize okay. meter base number two. Tape, you know, so we're, you'll have clearance to the line, line side of the meter base until we put the meter in, of course. And then if you're ready for us to do that after I heat it up, that's what we'll do. Okay. What about the uh, alternative power? Did you come up with a plan? Yeah, so I've got uh, one of our warehouse assistants is coming here. Yeah. And he's dropping off a two pole breaker. Yep. You're gonna use these? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. All right. That's great. Hey, is that your yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you what, um, I've been out in the field for over 20, almost 30 years, but I've been doing this for almost 40, but uh, I ran into your guys sometimes and always top notch. Oh, I appreciate really that. Are. Yeah, real polite. And we usually work with them on stuff, you know. We usually do anyway. But everything, everything works good, professional and polite. Thank you, really appreciate yeah. that. It seems like it's around the Irvington area and stuff. A lot of that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Where's your office at? Because I've seen it. We were on East Washington Street and we moved down to Hannah and Keystone. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because at the East Washington it was like a small building, wasn't it? Yeah. There's a suite there. Or yep. Yeah. You got I've it. I've seen the back of it. Nice. All righty. Thank I'm, you, sir. I'm going to go ahead and hit this up. Okay. Playing hot, that covers off. Meter base two coming live. And a mouth, okay, and a mouth. So we are two and a half high. That's what we need to take off here without cutting our conductors. Um, two and a half, Sharpie and two and a half. We got the Sawzall, let's make this a tandem tag team, two and a half. We're gonna go a little further for, we're gonna go three, so we've got some latitude. Ooh. My guys would be terrified. They'd be like, you let Joel do what? He's so aggressive. It's reality. Yeah, go ahead and pull that booger off there if you, if you can. Yeah, good time. Um, anybody can leave when they need to leave. Drew's coming with some parts. I think I'll legit be able to finish what's here. And then uh, IES will hook up tomorrow morning at 8.30 or Mead, one or the other. Holy Toledo, you're gonna have to watch the next video to see us using the eye tool on a 260 foot run a week from today. However, no sneak peeks. This was just the trial run. Next week it's the big run, uh, but we were able to get that triplex 500 aluminum MCM up and out of the conduit. Substantially long enough to hit the, uh, the CTs and terminations. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Does anybody know what that is? Sure you do. That's an expansion fitting. Look, it's marked with a midpoint right there. I'm at, um, I'm gonna put it right near the midpoint. 
a little bit past. See, an expansion fitting is to allow for the thermal expansion characteristics of PVC conduit. I gauge that this PVC conduit has a one, on the east face of this building in Indiana, has a 100 degree expansion, 100 degree variable in temperature, degrees Fahrenheit, right? And so it could be negative, it could be negative 10, might be a little colder at times, and it could go all the way up on the, in the sun on the east face, it could be 100, so let's say 110 degrees. So I've got, I'm, I'm gonna be over my run, if every run between fixed points, elbows, boxes, cabinets, every run of conduit between fixed points, that has over a quarter inch of expansion, based upon table 352.44 in the National Electrical Code, requires an expansion fitting. So I'm gonna close the, that's half point, right? That's, that's all the way out. I'm gonna close this fitting just over half because I'm above the midpoint temperature. Midpoint temperature would be, what do we say, about uh, 45 degrees, and I'm sitting right now at about 75. So it's not going to, um, it's not, if it gets hotter, the pipe is going to extend, it's gonna lengthen, and if it gets colder, it's going to contract. So I wanna have more contraction ability in the pipe and so I'm gonna secure with my minis to the wall. I'm gonna not tighten them down so much that they can't expand and contract. I'm gonna put the expansion fitting right here. That's my coupling between my new trailer panel that's going here and my LB that's down there. So don't forget your expansion fittings. Um, I've heard them said, depending on where you are and what soil types you have and what your local code enforcement is, that every place conduits coming out of the ground, you should have an expansion fitting to allow for frost heave and prevent things from getting ripped apart. It hasn't seemed to be an issue or practice here in Indiana, but it's something you might think about. Okay, before we throw this baby live, 129, things just keep running hotter and hotter. It truly is 130, 129.5. And phase to phase, we're sitting at 260. All right. And it's on. One, two, three, four. We got lights. Let's back that panel out, put the cover on. Whew. Patch that up. Peripheral damage everywhere. Everywhere. Guys, so the meter base is upside down. The cover is welded in. I mean, it's fighting me every step of the way. This is rigid steel, nothing easy about it. I've carefully sawed on all the way around this pipe, and then I had to create a jig because I couldn't get to this face or that face. I didn't have a cutoff wheel with me. So I opened up the wall on the other side. I've got as much exposed as possible, and it's just me and my phone now, and the kids are helping. Everybody else has left. Um, so I created a jig and put a hole saw without the mandrill on the jig. I've bored through both sides. It's ready to come off now. I need to straighten up my conductor so it doesn't fight me the whole way. And we'll pull this off and see if I damage the conductor. So if I did, I'm I'm, in, I'm woo, and I'm really in trouble. I made the decision not to pull. Oh, that's looking good. Woo, that's wild. Uh, I made the decision not to pull uh, this cable back and then up, but to cut around the pipe. I figured that old rusty pipe is going to be full of rust. It's going to be incredible resistance between here and there. So I said, no, nah, I just got to use it in its present state. I'll probably use it until it fails. Oh. And this old copper, this is weird. Let's we'll see what we have here. Oh. Woo. That goes to the pile. Okay, moment of truth. Wow, that's amazing. Dad? What is this? There's a sleeve, I think that's, I think this is copper insulated wire. Yeah, it's like cloth conductors inside of this overall outer cloth jacket. Same thing here. I wonder if that's like premium direct burial cable or underground cable back in the day. Man, I'm going to cut this off and disregard it. There's no way. Or maybe I can pull it out. Doubt it. Nope. Not even going to try that. Whew. My sawzall blade is all bent up. I haven't shed blood today yet, which is which is unusual. Oh. Man, I don't know if this could be any harder. I do not know. It's gonna be super hard to get this through, I can tell you that much. All right, this is my contraption. That's gonna be my offset to come in the bottom of my meter cabinet as prescribed by the utility. Okay, the fitting is in there. Worked pretty gorgeous. 
that is what it's gonna have to be right there and now it's time to patch the concrete i don't know how to do that that um the last last chunk of concrete Woo! you know upon reflection i don't know how long it's been a provision in the code but if it's encased in at least two inches of concrete then it's considered exterior which is why there's no disconnect so it, even though it's inside the structure it's exterior because of that concrete encasement and that's why that's there and that added a heck of a lot of work for us. Please, exterior disconnects. Man, it's not one thing, it's another. My uh, 20 amp breaker is kicking out. I don't know why. It won't operate this chop saw. I've had it on 20 amp breakers before. So I'm going, I'm going big. I've turned it off. I've got an insulated screwdriver here. I'm tired, it's late. I'm trying to keep my mind, my wits about me. And I'm gonna actually transfer this down to the 60 amp available breaker that I'm gonna use for electric vehicle charging. That's right, this little 12 gauge wire. The, the chop saws are gonna be very intermittent. I'm gonna, it's literally gonna be on a 60 amp breaker. And uh, I'm gonna get through this. I'll move it back. But first you don't succeed. <laughs> watching me in the dark. <laughs> but thankfully I've been able to salvage some bricks from another part of the house, something that we're tearing down, so I just pop them off, clean them up, I'm gonna start mortaring them into place. I'm gonna fill the void, and then I'm actually gonna use block behind the equipment, but I'm gonna use brick down here. So it's, uh, it's gonna be tedious. This is my job for the next two hours. It is 12.10 p.m. We are making progress. We've got the panel landed. The Sorry, the meter landed. It's mounted to the wall. The brickwork is done. I'm just gonna do some cleaning on the brickwork to remove the residual. The boys are champs. I absolutely 110% could not have physically, regardless of how long I worked, accomplished this on my own. I can't believe this. It's tough. It's good. Oh my goodness, see that conductor in the lower right? That just barely reached. Look at that. And look, this is lead covered. I was able to cut that off with my utility knife. I'm going to spare no expense. Left lead covered with some kind of fillable coating. Copper conductors. And yeah, it's pretty slick. It was well built. But man, we just barely escaped by the hair of our chinny chin chin in a couple different ways. It's happening. Check back in soon. Woo! We're making progress. It is 1.56 a.m. I did not realize that the linemen, look at that, they uh, volunteered all the lugs, but that one is a single barrel lug, so I don't have a home for my my uh, second neutral conductor. So I've got to run to the shop tonight. Oh my goodness. Conduit's in, second trailer panel's in. Uh, we are making progress. We have worked our way all the way over here and have started repairing conduit issues. We've got vertical support. We've got reducing washers. We've got straps. Uh, we've got to finish the top and second conduit. Breakers are in. Feeder uh, service conductors are terminated. That is a main service panel right there and right there. That's for electric vehicle charging and that is for uh, house power, which wraps around the carriage house and takes off for the pool in the west wing. So close it in, close it in. What did you say? I want it for the cottage. The electricity is finally back on after 30 hours. It is so nice to have power. Oh my goodness. I'm walking through the house, shutting off all the lights that the kids have left on while they've been running through the house and flipping them by habit. And then of course they leave them on because nothing happened. I forget to shut them off. So you can check the refrigerators, freezers, get the air conditioning cranking, starting to, starting to cook. But we got wattage for the cottage, baby. You guys excited about your electricity? Yes. Yes, me too. The well, linemen have completed their work. We are energized, rolling on up out of here. 
there it is. Look at those massive connectors up there. Woo! Well, the dew is extremely heavy, so I'm gonna have rust mitigation on all my tools. Uh, everything was just saturated out here. Should probably plan a project like this for two days and have a, a staged cutover as opposed to an all-in-one. <clears throat> it's just a lot, but I have to admit to myself, I do these things to myself because I love a challenge. I know after a 22 hour work day, I'm gonna be stronger, smarter. I, the boys are gonna remember that for the rest of their lives. So it was fantastic. I don't have any regrets. I didn't get any complaints from the neighbors about the noise, that's good. And everything is on and humming perfectly. So I'm, I'm thrilled to pieces, I'm on cloud nine. I did, another lesson learned, I did. And then still I am, I can't even hold the, the phone still. I've got a lot of tension and discomfort in my right wrist from all of the stripping and torquing of those larger conductors, um, bending and wrangling that cable. I need to distribute the wear and tear to the left side of my body. And just 22 hours of that is, I wasn't ready for it. It's too much, too much. But you don't do that every day. I, I think I've got runner's side. I think it's legit. I feel great. <laughs> I feel fantastic. I did make a couple little mistakes that were goofy last night. I failed to knock out the breaker closers from that panel. So the cut inside cover was bulging. So I had to work and work and work to get it on. Last night, I just didn't have my senses about me and work and work and work to get it back off this morning in order to correct it. And of course, in the final 60 seconds of the job, I cut my finger. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? Oh well. Guys, 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 this is the bazooka method. This is so crazy. I know this. But if you're looking for a sniper rifle method because your wife is maybe not as generous as mine, it's for 14 linear feet of electrical equipment, 350 pounds of gear on the outside of your house. If you don't have friends in the utility company, if you can't do it yourself, you're gonna to have to hire it out for $14,000. If you're not a quarter mile from a substation such that the utility company will give you a thousand amps, then let's recreate this. Let's back up the truck. I didn't know about the span when I planned this. It took me 18 months. I was permitted, I was approved, I had underground conduits, so I was everything. Back up the truck. This becomes a span panel. Leave this one alone. Unnecessary, 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 completely superfluous. Span drive integrates with the span panel. It's NEMA 3R rated. It's beautiful. It's sleek. It's sexy. And here's the deal. Span drive, the load comes up and down through active monitoring. So if your electric oven kicks on, your 200 amp service is maxed, then your span drive brings it down. It slows the charge, turns it off, whatever the case may be. And when that oven turns off, you're done cooking the turkey, boy, that span drive comes right back to 11.4 kilowatts hour of continuous juice. It's monitoring, managing, controlling your energy in the palm of your hand, notifications. You, you're in control. One 200 amp span panel, no service upgrade. There's another way to do this. So if you're an installer taking your business to the next level, or if you're a homeowner looking for the sleek and smart solution, click the link in the description. Check out this video on the nuts and bolts, the guts of SPAN, and subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.